Today we're looking at graphing cubic equations and we're going to start with an equation that's already been factorised. And uh, this equation has one linear factor, x plus 1, and it has a repeated linear factor, x take 2, all squared. We, we say it's a repeated factor because the same linear factor occurs twice. Let's take a close look uh, through our little magnifying glass here. You'll notice the equation has uh, two main parts as I've said and we're going to deal with each part separately. We're going to start by remembering just one or two of the things that we know about graphing straight lines. Let's look at what the graph of y equals x plus 1 looks like. It has slope 1. What I want to pay a particular attention to is the x-intercept of this graph. It is fairly clear that uh, when x is minus 1, y is 0. Let's clearly mark uh, the x-intercept there. What would happen if we place a number in front of the brackets? Uh, what I've drawn there corresponds exactly to the case when k equals 1. But what happens if, if k were a different number? If k equals 2, then we end up with a line that is a steeper slope, but the number in front of x plus 1 does not affect the x-intercept because any number multiplied by 0 is 0. If I wanted to, I could generate a straight line that went through that point on the x-axis with a negative slope by just choosing a negative value of k. Let's now consider the parabola. Now there's a couple of ways you can imagine graphing this. I'd like you to uh, stop and look at this and see if you can pick what the x-intercept is from the equation. Yes, because it's in factored form, uh, we're looking for x equals 2. Because this is a function squared and any number squared must be positive, uh, we know that uh, there are only positive y values, 0 or positive. And because we've graphed uh, quadratics before, we know the shape will be a parabola, and that's enough information for us to get a rough idea of what this shape would look like. In a later topic, we're going to look at graphing uh, parabolas in more detail, and we will discover that this uh, gives you the equation of a parabola that's been moved sideways by two units. Again, we can put a k in front, and the original curve corresponds to k equals 1. If I choose a larger k value, that will steepen the slope. But again, at x equals 2, y is just equal to k times 0, and it doesn't actually matter what k is. The y value has to remain 0. As before, I could uh, turn the curve upside down by choosing a negative value of k, and I can spread the curve out. Or I can, I can shrink the y values, pull the y values closer to the x-axis by choosing a k value that's very small. Let's turn our attention to the cubic equation, the original equation we were asked to graph. What we have here is these two sections we've identified, the linear section and the quadratic section, in an arm wrestle, as it were, fighting over who gets to control the behaviour of the graph. Now there are some clear situations in which x plus 1 must dominate, must control the behaviour of the graph. When x is negative 1, it actually doesn't matter what the rest of the equation is. Um, the other bit could be 10, it could be a million, it could be 157, y is equal to 0. Likewise, uh, when x is equal to 2, it doesn't matter what the first part of the equation is. The x take 2 term will completely control the equation of the graph. When you're close to negative 1, the x plus 1 term is very, very, very small. It doesn't matter what the other part of the equation is. The graph will, if you zoom in, look very similar to the graph of a straight line. What the x take 2 part does out the front is the x take 2 part uh, becomes, what well, we can think of it as approximately constant. If you stay very close to minus 1 and you don't change x too much, obviously x does change a bit, but it doesn't change too much, and the x take 2 term is approximately constant. And if you substitute minus 1 in, you end up with minus 1 minus 2, all squared, which is 9. Then we end up with y equals 9 times x plus 1. A very steep straight line crossing at x equals minus 1. When x is equal to 2, of course, the second part of the curve dominates because multiplying anything by 0 gives you 0. So if I'm close to 2, the first part of the graph, if I stay very close to 2, uh, the first part of the graph obviously does change a bit, but it's approximately constant and it, it is not controlling the behaviour of the graph. If we substitute in x equals 2 into the first part of the equation, uh, we end up with a 2 plus 1 at the front, which gives us 3. This gives us a rough idea of the approximate shape of the curve. It should look something like y equals 3 times x take 2 
all squared. At other points in the graph, of course, neither of these two components will control, but close to minus one and close to two, the two uh, factors that we're considering, one single and one, one repeated, are going to control the, uh, the shape of the graph completely. Let's now combine all the different things we've done together and see if we can't draw a picture of the cubic. At x equals minus 1 and x equals 2, we know the y value has to be 0. And at close to minus 1, the linear term will dominate. So I'm going to draw in a straight line with a fairly positive slope. Um, that's our 9 times x plus 1. And on top of 2, let's draw in a fairly steep parabola. That's our 3 times x take 2 all squared. And the cubic has to be a curve that fits uh, these behaviours at those places. And we're done.